Today's topic is tension, and I'm not going to cover tension basics, like make sure your machine is threaded properly and that your discs don't have little pieces of thread jammed in there. I could make that video if enough of you wanted me to, but this is something different. I want to talk about tension as it relates to art quilting and perfectionism and living in the real world. And so I'm showing you right here the back of a recent wall hanging called Here Comes the Sun. And next to it, I'm showing you the back of another recent one called Copperfield. And you can see the one on the left is what my backs usually look like. The one on the right is a little bit messier on the back. What I want to talk about are three different types of tension. And the first type is what I call perfect or pretty tension. And perfect or pretty tension is sometimes one-sided. And here is a look at some of it on the front of these two wall hangings. So you can see what's really going on here. There's a little tiny bit of red showing between every stitch on this side and a little tiny bit of white showing between every stitch on this side. The same thing is going on where I have two white threads on this line of stitching, but it's not as noticeable because they're both white. And this is one layer of fabric, which you don't stitch through very often, and it's hard to have perfect tension on one layer of fabric because there's no width to hide that crossover and there's no margin for error in terms of having perfect tension. Now I learned to sew on my mom's 1950s Singer that had the prettiest stitch I've ever seen. I always say I have a terrible mechanical memory because if I haven't used something recently I can't use it anymore. But with this, my hand goes right to the right place, so I'm doing pretty well. I've switched out my bobbin thread. It was clear, I think possibly from the sewing machine shop. I've made my stitch a 10, and this is a regular straight stitch. I've got navy blue thread in the top and a kind of a aqua thread in the bottom. I think this is a very pretty stitch. I, think, I hope you can see it. So this is what this looks like on my mom's old machine, very good old machine. And uh, this is the back. And I just think it's a pretty stitch. It just, it's just so straight and pretty. And you do get the tiniest hint of the other thread color when you only go through two layers. If you have one layer of fabric, then your top thread is gonna kinda do this. And I'm just gonna go fast, so I'm not gonna draw it exactly like a stitch looks. That's your top thread. And then here's your bottom thread. And it just will loop over, and that's why you see those little dots. And that's for one layer of fabric. If you have three layers of fabric, like a hem, and these stitches are exaggerated really large, but I think you'll get the idea. Anyway, so you have more, as it's compressing the fabric down, you still have more of a thickness for these stitches to hide in than with one layer. And then with batting, it's even more pronounced. And so it's gonna be like this. And then, and it's compressing that a bit where the stitches are. If you have your top thread too tight, I'm just gonna do this, with three layers of fabric, it's gonna do this. And if you have your bottom thread too tight, your bobbin thread, it's gonna do that. And so that's what this all looks like. So let's look at a few more things that I want to show you. If you do something that's more like a hem on a napkin and you turn this once and you turn it twice, when you go and stitch through here, you're going through three layers of fabric. And my tension's pretty good right now. If you can see right here, you just get a hint of that red in there. It's not super prominent. And on the other side, you just get the little hint of white because my tension's pretty good. And you can see that if I was sewing this with black and black thread, I could have a really uh, perfectly look, sewn looking thing. And these stitches are pretty, pretty, pretty. 
you know that's a pretty nice line of stitching the second type of tension that I want to talk about is is incompetent tension and incompetent tension is so bad you just have to pull it out it's not good enough it's not going to do the job it could easily snag on something and pull out but at least the good news is that if you have to pull out incompetent tension it's so incompetent that it's very easy to pull out and you can do it quickly <laughs> so so is that incompetent enough for you <laughs> that's when my top thread is really really loose okay so there my uh my stitching is really incompetent let's let's try to not have it be quite so bad okay um the third kind of tension that i want to talk about today competent or useful tension and that's exactly what it sounds like it's tension that's going to do the job it's not going to pull out of there you won't snag it easily if at all, on a splinter, you know, on the rough edge of a shelf or a table or whatever. And it's going to stay sewn, but it doesn't look exactly perfect. Sometimes even on the front side. I've seen things over the years that were perfect items, a perfect backpack that wasn't sewn with perfect tension. And it's still a very useful handsome item that uh, helps you throughout your days and upon closer inspection the tension's not perfect everywhere and that can happen even in things that aren't so utilitarian as a backpack. I'm guessing that some of you are now asking did she just make this whole video to justify messy backs <laughs> on art quilts and the answer is yes and no. I made this because we're going to move into a new project, the horse of a different color. And I want to remind you that tension should be top of mind the whole time while you're art quilting. And also that washing will shrink your piece and help maximize the look of your stitches. But this is the real world and I recommend doing your best and then letting the back of your quilt go as long as your stitch quality is not actually incompetent. There are a lot of things to learn about troubleshooting tension with your own machine. In general, those things are, first, check your needle for damage and change it if you never have before, or if you can remember bending or sort of crashing it into a lot of fabric when you were doing things that were really thick and where you were struggling. Also, um, do you even know what needle you're using? You want to educate yourself about what your brand or model of sewing machine can use and figure out if your needle is appropriate for quilting through several layers plus paint. You may need a larger needle, in a few cases smaller. Um, I tend to use a big needle no matter what I'm sewing because I go through so much stuff and because the needles available for an industrial machine are very limited and it's not like fancy machines where it's dizzying the kinds of needles that you can have and how specialized they are and the ways that little tiny physical properties of the needle can change the look of a stitch going through especially fussy fabrics but even through cotton and so you want to educate yourself to the types of needles for your machine and what you specifically need when you're dealing with attention uh, and trying to troubleshoot ask yourself is this threaded properly and am I winding my bobbin properly um, if the page in your manual about winding your bobbin and threading your machine aren't a little dog-eared or coffee stained um, or, or if you've never even looked at it I suggest that you do that because it's very important when you attempt art quilting that you really understand how your machine functions and what benefits it. An important thing for tension is having your tension discs be clear so that they can properly 
have the right amount of tension on the thread as it passes through. If you really are struggling and you can't tell, it might be time to visit your friendly local sewing machine tech who can check on this as part of a periodic tune-up. Tune it may be time that you clean and oil your machine and if you've never done this before it's time to get out the manual and learn and again a professional could train you how to do this or do it for you but many machines need to be oiled regularly and they should be blown out and brushed out too and so you want to learn how to do that another question is have you considered the weights of your top and bobbin threads if you use a lighter thread in the bobbin as a strategy, you can achieve a very proud look on your top threads, and that's something worth looking at. If you're really struggling and your tension just doesn't look good and you're getting what you consider, because it's a personal decision, what's incompetent and what's not. Although in a few cases, like the ones I showed, it's pretty much going to be universal, unless you're kidding yourself. But the question is, have you tried everything you can think of to test and troubleshoot and adjust your top thread with the project fabric and the thread you're planning to use for the project? And if you've done everything you can, then you may want to look at adjusting your bottom tension. If you really need to adjust your bobbin tension, uh, you might want to look at doing a little quarter turn, give or take and then retesting. That's that tiny little screw and uh, mine has two screws. One's glued in on my uh, industrial machine. My other machine just has one screw and and you can learn to do this and you can learn to test if your bob intention is is right. Um, but the thing is if that's if that's beyond you do if you can get somebody to help you with it and learn how to do it. Um, personally, I think my tension, at least on my um, industrial machine, runs a little tight, but not enough to pucker fabric. And I think that because my needle only does a nice job of sewing, or it really any job of sewing, if it's installed a quarter turn off of what's recommended, I think that it's a timing issue, but as long as I'm still producing beautiful projects, I haven't taken it to the machine doctor myself. I'm just continuing I'm just continuing to use it the way that I use it and it's doing an acceptable job in my personal opinion. So, it's all personal choice and a judgment call and blah 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 blah. blah.